you went to flash your flight controller with Betaflight 4.1, and when you got to the pull-down menu in the configurator, your flight controller's name was there twice. Once with the word legacy next to it, and once without. What the heck is going on there, and which one do you want to select? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. In this video, I'm going to tell you about Betaflight Unified Targets. But before we get into that, I want to let you know this video is part of a playlist of videos about Betaflight 4.1. My goal is to document everything you could possibly want to know about Betaflight 4.1. There's a playlist in the video description with all the Betaflight 4.1 tutorial videos that I've made. I hope if you have a question, there's an answer to that question in that playlist. So go down to the video description, check out that playlist after you're done watching this video. At first, it'll be empty and it'll be just like this video and nothing else, but then it'll fill in over time. So, well, okay, let's talk about what unified targets are. And in order to talk about that, let's talk about what a Betaflight target is. A Betaflight flight controller has a processor, F3, F4, F7, and those processors have certain resources which have to be assigned to the functions that we know about. So, for example, there are pins on the processor, physical input output pins, and those pins are mapped to resources like motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, UART 1, etc. There are also internal resources inside the processor called DMA channels and timers, and without getting into too much detail, the board designer has to allocate those resources to certain functions. So motor 1 gets a certain DMA channel, motor 2 gets a certain DMA channel, and so on and so on. The Betaflight target defines the mapping of those physical pins and logical resources, DMA channels and so on. The Betaflight target defines the mapping of those resources to the physical pads on the board that you and I interact with. So if we go into the Betaflight GitHub repo, we can actually find the target file for the Seal Racing F4 flight controller I'm working with. And this is the manufacturer of the board would create this file and it tells Betaflight everything it needs to know about how the manufacturer has allocated those resources. For example, UART that use UART 6, that means that this flight controller has a UART 6. It has a UART 3, and UART 6 RX pin is uh, pin PC7, and so on and so on. Now, if you are bored and annoyed at this whole conversation, just think about how bored and annoyed the Betaflight devs must be, because for every one of the over 150 boards that Betaflight supports, somebody has to maintain this file. And that's why when somebody makes a new flight controller and they say, hey, can I get a new target made for my flight controller? I want it to be, why is my flight controller use the CL Racing F4 target and not the JB F4 target? Well, the answer is that creating a new target is a big freaking hassle for the Betaflight devs to maintain. Even just the act of compiling all these targets takes hours and hours and hours. It turns out that almost all of these flight controllers are using just one of a few processors, the STM32 F405, the F411, the F745, and so on. And so the underlying resources that are being assigned are kind of the same, and it's just sort of how you shuffle them around that the, that the target file is defining. So what the Betaflight devs did to make their life easier is make it possible to define the targets using the Betaflight command line. Instead of having to compile and hard code these target definitions, uh, you can just compile a generic universal target for any STM32F405 board, and then go into the command line and copy paste in a certain config file that finishes the resource assignment. And in fact, some of you have experienced this because you flashed like the STM32F405 target to your flight controller. And when you did that, your gyro didn't work and none of your UARTs were present because that target doesn't contain any of the resource assignments. The Betaflight devs realized that the approach of forcing you to download a config file and paste it into the command line was a pain in the ass and they made your life easier. So in Betaflight 4.1 and Configurator 10.6, when you flash the Seal Racing F4 target, what that's actually doing is it's flashing the STM32F405 target to the board and it's automatically applying the appropriate config file. So essentially from your perspective, 
Nothing has changed. You're just going to flash the Seal Racing F4 target just like you always did. And the fact that it is actually under the hood based on the universal target, that makes the Betaflight dev's life easier, but it doesn't really affect your experience as a user very much. Well, it changes it a little bit. After you have finished flashing a unified target, the first time you connect to the board, you'll get this message, which basically says, shall I apply the config file for you? And you should basically always say, apply custom defaults, and that will complete the configuration of your board. At that point, the board works just like always. Well, that leaves just one big question then. If unified targets are so seamless from the user's perspective, then why are these legacy targets still here? And the answer to that is that we're still in the release candidate window and some of the unified targets still have bugs. So for example, I heard a story of someone who flashed the unified target version of his flight controller and the OSD didn't work. If you flash the unified target and you find that some function doesn't seem to work, like a UART is missing or anything, the OSD doesn't work, the first thing to do is to go try flashing the legacy target and see if that makes it work. And if you end up in that situation, it'd be super helpful if you would report that as a bug uh, on the Betaflight Slack or on the Betaflight GitHub repo. That's the kind of thing that will get worked out over time. You may see that for some of these flight controllers, there isn't a legacy target. And there's two reasons for that. One reason is that some of the newer targets were never compiled for a previous version of Betaflight, and there just isn't a legacy version of them that was ever created. The other reason is that some of these targets don't have a universal target to find for them yet, and when you flash the target, you're flashing the legacy version, even though it doesn't say legacy. So that is Betaflight universal targets, and that explains why you see legacy in this pull-down list some of the time. Uh, I hope that clears up the confusion about when you should flash legacy and when you shouldn't. And for those of you who are super nerds and just wanted to get into the technical details, this is really exciting because like, when I'll tell you a personal story. When I released the JBF4, we used, with permission by the way, with permission, the CL Racing F4 target. We just reuse that target definition. We moved the pins around, we changed the board layout, and we added some stuff to it. But the underlying pin definition was Seal Racing F4. And the reason we did that was that we didn't want to impose on the Betaflight devs to have them maintain a new target just so we could have, they call them vanity targets. I just want the JBF4 because I'm Joshua Bardwell. We didn't want to do that. And that's the same reason that like Brain FPV maintains their own targets for the Radix. They don't want to put the work on the Betaflight devs to make them do that. But the problem was some of the things we changed about the JBF4 were different than the CL Racing F4. For example, uh, the, the default current sensor scale was not correct. The current meter didn't read correctly. And we had no way of changing that without creating a new target. It's very exciting to see universal targets come along as somebody who is involved with making flight controllers because it means that if I want to do something, if I want to change the default um, current sensor scale or I want to change some other default about the, the board, I can do that without having to push this through this whole involved process of making a new target. And that's, that's really exciting. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you will check the playlist in the video description. Come back to the channel regularly as I release more content about Betaflight 4.1. This is the first one I'm making, and it may be the first one you're seeing, but more is coming. Betaflight 4.1 has some exciting and some confusing and annoying features, but don't worry. I'm going to do my best to document as many of them as I can. Thank you guys so much. Happy flying.